Hello everyone, I'm Ryan from Two Car Pros, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to replace the head unit in a 2005 Honda Civic. Now, I replaced it with an aftermarket head unit, but if you're replacing it with a stock head unit, the procedure is exactly the same, except you don't need to do any soldering or crimp connecting. You can just put the new stock unit in, and you don't really need to do any of that uh, trickery I did with an aftermarket head unit, but it, chances are you are putting an aftermarket head unit in. It's fairly easy and straightforward. The only tricky part is figuring out how the trim pieces come off, and that's what this video is for. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do before we do anything electrical in the vehicle is we're going to remove the negative battery terminal cable with a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. You just wanna make sure it's nice and loose and then you can slide it off and tuck it to the side of the battery in such a way like that, that it can't accidentally touch while we're working on stuff. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab a small prying implement. I really like this body panel removal tool. It seems to be at a good angle. You could use a standard screwdriver as well. We're gonna go around the uh, trim for the shifter here and gently uh, pry it up. There's little plastic clips uh, that are really easy to break, so just go around it like that. We can remove that trim piece there. Now we need to remove this other trim piece, this larger black one. And again, it just has some cl plastic uh, clips down in there. There we go. That's nice and removed. And that gives us access to these two Phillips head screws. Next, we gotta remove these two Phillips heads at the top of your screen there in the bottom. All right, with those two screws up there removed, you can see here, right there, and there, and there, and there, there's four clips holding this side piece of trim on. So, we need to pry that out very gently. So in regards to this piece of side trim, you want to pull toward you like this and it should, you know, have a nice gratifying click sound when you remove it. And then as far as where the cigarette lighter is attached. So this is the cigarette lighter connector and you just pull it straight out. It bites you a little bit, but it's not too bad. And then for underneath, there is two eight millimeter uh, bolts or Phillips heads. I'm gonna be using an eight millimeter and you can just kind of feel up there. there let's get those out of there. Now we should be able to remove this panel as a whole. Use our body panel puller here to help us negotiate some of those clips. And it just comes out like that. And then on the back side here, we need to unconnect everything. And they have little safeties. You just depress the safety and you can uh, slide a, a connector out. They're all self-explanatory except for this black connector here. Um, you push on the black piece. I thought you pushed on the white piece. I was completely wrong. You gotta push on the black piece. The black piece is the safety and then it comes straight out like the rest. So now we can take the whole face unit over to the workbench. So you kind of get the picture of what's going to happen. This double din unit is going to fit basically right there. We are going to lose this little uh, cubby tray here, but if you're doing a single din unit, you're only going to be replacing this top area, and then you'll be able to keep your cubby tray. Um, but that's not what we're doing today. So if you have a single din, it'll be very, very similar. Uh, it'll just look a tiny bit different. So let's get to work. So on the side here, we need to remove these Phillips screws. So small, uh, small glitch there. You can't actually get to that screw unless you take these HVAC controls out, but that's fairly easy.
I believe you just need to remove these three Phillips. Gotta take the knobs off. And then that comes out. Back to what we were doing. Now the original uh, head unit has come out here, there we go, and the little tray too. And if you were doing a single den, you don't need to remove this tray, uh, you can put it in, and you can leave it in, and I know mine on the side is technically a single den, but the screen makes it a double den, so it is a double den. So I have this complete installation kit from Install Centric, uh, or maybe by Skoshi? I'm not sure. Anyway, I left the link down below in the description for you if you're interested. This kit is really cool because uh, it comes with the fit kit. This was what makes your head unit look pretty sitting in there and not all off looking. And then it also comes with uh, some crimp connecting here, which is super cool. I've never seen that come in a kit before. Usually they kind of rely on you to have that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know if I'll be using this. I, I have a soldering iron. I have some solder. I could solder it together, but I don't know. Maybe I'll do this and get the whole ex full experience. That wouldn't be bad. I even have a little ground eyelet in there. That's so cool. And then the very important uh, speaker harness. So this is what actually interfaces with the car and tells the head unit telling the car what is playing through the speakers. This is what does it. This is insanely important. Yeah, I need this. And uh, I guess you don't technically need the pretty kit, but man, I, I would get it if I was you. So what we can do, I bought this uh, fit kit on Amazon. I, uh, I'm not paid by these people at all. So I have no qualms with telling you that it isn't shaped exactly right. Okay, so uh, it seems like the height is good on this kit, but the width is totally off. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure how wide a typical double din unit is. And I know this is one because I've installed it in quite a few vehicles. So it's 177.89. And then we can measure the in inside diameter of this. And yeah, it's totally off. So let's see. The one inside width of this is 172.22. Um, so what that means is while this looks really good, um, it doesn't uh, quite fit. So we're going to make it fit. We'll, uh, we'll just shave off some of the sides here. All right. So now we have the right kit here. It's a uh, Metra 957899 link down below in the description. Forget that other kit. It is garbage. The only thing you're going to need with that is the wiring harness that is made by that Soshi company. Um, but this is probably okay because it's just wires and as long as it connects, it connects, right? Um, but I do have to recommend Metra. I've worked with their products before. No, I'm not getting paid to say that. It's just my personal experience. So in the kit, it even tells you how to take it apart. So if you buy this uh, fit kit, you don't even need me. But keep watching the video. It's good for you. So in the destructions, it says, uh, you know, cut this out if you have a double din like we have. Um, so that's a little annoying, but not the end of the world. I believe that is so you can have, you know, like a single din, and then you can have your little cubby container again, but we're not doing that, so we need to cut this out. So if you had a single din system, you would leave this crossbar in, but we don't, so we're going to cut that out. So you can see a file was really a good call here um, to get that nice and smooth. So either way, you're, you're doing some modification. So now when we put on our fit kit here, it should be slides on nicely. And it does, look, it actually fits. So that's exciting. <laughs> done there is put the four screws in so the head unit is actually physically uh, in this bracket here with those four uh, Phillips head screws that you get with your radio so you might be asking well why do you need this this is just to occupy the gap in between there so it looks better you don't 
technically need it if you're just concerned with just functionality. Um, I'm a big fan of them because I like to, my cars to look pretty good, you know. And when it snaps in that easy, there's really no reason not to do it, and it looks like a million bucks. So, I am, abs I am an absolute advocate of the fit kits. I think they look great. Okay, we need to put these HVAC controls back in. That's pretty easy. Just those three Phillips screws that we removed earlier. There we go. Three Phillips screws holding the HVAC controls in our back. And then we can put the knobs back on. And the knobs are just the inverse of removing them. You just kind of push them on, make sure the flat spots line up there on the prongs. And uh, so like the one I'm holding, the uh, little sheath came out on the prong itself, like this middle one here. So that's kind of tough to see, but uh, you want to match those back up so that way they don't just come off um, randomly. And then the sleeves went in with the other knobs, so those can just go on as long as the flat parts uh, match up there. Just like that. Line that up. Oops. Line that up like that, there we go, perfect. Okay, so what we have here is the wiring harness that actually comes with your head unit. This comes in the box with your head unit, but it won't interface directly into your vehicle. You could solder it directly into your wiring harness um, if you want to, but that's something that I, dis I disagree with. Um, so you're going to want to get one of these. Uh, this, is, this will let the radio interface with the car. So this goes on the car side, this goes on the radio side. And uh, before you ruin the bag, and I don't have mine um, because this is a second hand, hand head unit, but uh, the head unit will come with an instruction booklet and it will tell you what each wire means and just make sure they all match up. Um, usually all the colors just go to the correct colors, but not every single time, just most of the time. I've seen them not match up once or twice, but... Um, they match up for this particular head unit. So what we need to do, <clears throat> cool. what we need to do is uh, either solder or joint connector our wires here. I think that was a little bit too much, but if you don't have one of these, maybe check them out. This is made by Paladin Tools and it's an auto stripper so you're not sitting here getting frustrated about stripping and it strips perfectly every single time. Uh, so we need to find its adjacent wire. So this is just plain green. There's no stripe So we're gonna look for plain green no stripe in this harness so These two wires need to be connected and you can do that via solder. Solder is, solder is gonna be ideal But we have these quick connectors from the kit earlier and since it worked out so well for us Why not? Why not try to use them? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use these uh, quick connectors here. So if you ever use these uh, quick connectors before, they're kind of neat. Uh, you just insert wire on one end and crush it. Like that. Make sure it doesn't come out and it's not. Don't pull on it with the might of Zeus, but you know, make sure it doesn't fall out. And then I gotta get this other one here. Insert it into there. Crush that, and there we go. We have a nice good connection there without having a soldering iron, just in case you don't have one, which is okay. Um, and if you don't have one of these fancy wire strippers, a normal wire stripper will work. Um, sometimes they're already pre-stripped like this side is, just this one isn't because it's used. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up and I'll turn on the camera when I'm done. Okay, on our wiring harness here, this wire is to run to the parking brake. Um, that is so you can gain some functionality when the vehicle has the parking brake set, or if you want to be a little bad, uh, you can route this to just any ground in the vehicle um, and it will act the same way. So you can round that to a ground. You could even piggyback it into this ground here because it just needs to be grounded out. So the radio thinks the parking brake is on. It's not technically legal, and I'm not telling you to do that, but it's a thing you could do if you wanted to. I'm just saying. 
Otherwise, you have to route it to the parking brake. So this part is optional. If uh, if you have a vehicle or if you have a head unit that uh, actually has a microphone like mine, uh, I've just put mine here, and I'm going to run the wire through the steering column here and around the wire down the steering column and through this area here. There's really no way for me to show it to you without just being fingers in darkness. So I'm just gonna route it real quick. Um, it's fairly easy. Uh, you could also uh, mount it up here or maybe in this area, but I like the microphone directly in front of you because obviously when you speak, you wanna be able to be able to hear you. And if the microphone's right in front of you, it's gonna be able to do that better. If you wanted to, um, you could drill a hole here and put like a rubber grommet to make it look nice, but uh, I don't want to do any permanent damage to the vehicle, so I'm just going to route it right through there and go that way into the back of the head unit. So let's do that. So that's what it looks like, uh, nice and routed. It was a little tricky getting it through there, but not too bad. You just got to reach in there. Small, Having small hands really helps, or a pair of uh, nice long uh, pterodactyl pliers helps. <sighs> and we can plug everything into the head unit. We have our wiring harness here. So we need to grab the wiring harness from the car and plug that in just like that. So we can plug that in. That just goes straight in. No uh, secret there. And this plugs in like that. And then you just need to plug in all the HVAC controls that we unplugged earlier. Like this lower one. Turn out the USB through here into the glove box, so that's nice and convenient. Okay, there's that. Plug that all in. Push that back in. Now before we do anything else, let's turn it on and make sure it actually functions, so if it doesn't, we can take it apart easy. So we know it works, um, that's awesome. So now we can turn the vehicle back off, unplug the battery again, and uh, continue reassembling what we took apart. There we are, that looks good. And we can put those screws back in the bottom, the really pain in the neck ones. So for the cigarette lighter, you just push it back on uh, the connector, it only really, it only goes the one way, like that. And then, you'll push this back into its home. Oh, like that. You hear that nice reassuring click? Very gratifying. Okay. And, we'll just snap these back into their home, just like that. Place these screws here. If you don't, the likelihood of the trim rattling is very high. that and I can put this trim piece here back in just snaps into place like so uh, same with this trim piece and we're done we can't forget to reattach our negative terminal on our battery only if we want to start right now when you're connecting the negative terminal go ahead and touch it to make sure it's not going to spark and then secure it down like that and then our 10 millimeter to tighten it up now it doesn't need to be crazy tight just enough so it doesn't fall off so that is how you replace the head unit in your 2005 honda civic uh it's pretty simple and straightforward i think anybody can do this with just a little bit of patience and time there was nothing that was impossible or hard it was Pretty easy once we figured out the trim and that wasn't too bad either. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure you're subscribed. All applicable links are located down below in the description and I'll see you next time.